Welcome back, guys. We're here watching the highlights or the lowlights for Griffin, but Hanwha Esports looked fantastic. Hanwha Life Esports, I should say. They take the win pretty convincingly on the backs of the Darius play from Linderong and the Elise play from Sungwon. Definitely the two MVPs of this game. Yeah, Sungwon started it, but Linderong ended it with oh, yeah. this Darius play. I think he'll end up picking up the MVP, even though Sungwon, to me, was the bigger reason they won. The difference between Sungwon getting those successful ganks early and then very clutch play onto the CC bar almost never ended yeah. here. Couldn't even use his ultimate. He hit but, like every cocoon too. But Someone the, was really on point. But I mean, as hitting every single target cocoon and getting at least two people on the apprehend every time by Linderong. This was a, a dirty game, but Hummel Life Esports looked controlled in their aggression on a comp that again is just so new meta. First we had MVP fitting the 8.11 meta. Uh, to a plum, and here we saw Hanwha Life Esports do a great <laughs> shot as well. Yeah, I mean, when you're this far ahead, and you've got Yasuo, Vladimir, Darius doing your damage, people are going to disappear like they never even existed. And that's exactly what we saw. Another cocoon lands, easy peasy. Hanwha Life came in and just smashed their faces. 14,000 damage for the Darius, got way ahead early and ended the game with a slam dunk. That is a huge amount of damage for a 26 minute game. A very, very short game time, but what do we say? If it's over before 25, basically every time another game along those lines, to me, rather being out of position on the Lulu, too many times a big struggle there. Something that Griffin could not afford for the next game. The picks will definitely change for Hanwha Life Esports, and I don't envy having to come up with some new bands to try oh, to yeah. deal with it. And it will be Linderong for our MVP. Yeah, I mean, we give the uh, the side MVP to someone. He really got the, the snowball started, but uh, that's his meme, guys. He's the thumbs up guy. We came in here, and uh, Hanwha Life Esports was actually giving away jerseys. You and I picked up I've a couple of them. I've never seen a team give away just a load of they jerseys just had a stack for free. Of them. The, the cheerful, sure, some candy, sure, but the actual jersey. Yeah. But that's what happens. They are sponsored by that table, that massive corporation in Hanwha Life. So it's a yep. big thing for them. It sounds like we're going to have our first substitution of the season. Ooh, okay. Let's see who it's going to be. I think you guys can guess. From Griffin in the mid lane, we will have Rather stepping out and Chovy stepping in. Uh, not a big surprise after the Lulu performance out of Rather. I think he's got to take a back seat and wait until another day. I think it's a good change given that it was the out of sync nature of Rather that was the big problem there. Yeah. Rather had a pretty good promotion, Tom. Not great in game number one. I didn't know if Chovy was going to be a nominal sub or see game time, but a lot of teams following the start of Afrika and using their 10 man or extended rosters. We will see Chovy, very young player, hard to scout, kind of new on the scene. Fun to see him try to slot in here. If you'll still go for the utility, and it feels like the Galio was always the way for Griffin in the mid lane when that made sense in the meta. Will we see someone attack the mid lane or go for a facilitator once again? Well, I mean, we, we saw that rather. It looked like he was having a little bit of nerves or just he was off with the team. You talked about how Chovy certainly looks like one of the younger players that we do have here. Can he step up to the plate with all of this pressure and try to pull Griffin out of the hole 0-1? And it's something we didn't touch on in game number one, but it is the LCK debut for five, now six players yeah. on the side of Griffin. They were on the LCK stage at the OGN Stadium for promotions, but this is the start of 18 best of threes. Is it the start of a struggle? Will they tune it around? Again, it's only a single game. We certainly can't write off any hype trains just yet, or even if they lose a best of three. But 16 best of three streak could end here, unless Chovy and the gang could pull one back. Yeah. Well, Lava rolling up his sleeves, getting ready to try to carry another game here. I don't know about him wearing the long sleeves. It's actually very hot in Seoul, so I'm it surprised is, yeah. he needs layers. Hanwha Life, they've got a couple sponsors, Life Plus and Dream Plus. All about the plus signs here. We'll hope we, they can actually end the season this time with a plus sign at the back of their indicator score. Something something positive hotel for yeah. Griffin. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. The <laughs> little so on the nose. The smiling sun there. It's like, <laughs> let's be positive even though we're getting smashed by Hanwha. And we may be smashed in the future. So was, I, I okay. guess you could ban the deck. I don't think you can ban the Elise. Too many champions can also be monsters in the early game, but maybe you consider banning the Darius. 
I was I was looking into the solo queue of Linderang uh, before the series. Darius certainly there for both these top lanes and bot laners, like we mentioned. The other two for the side of Linderang that he'd been playing recently. They can pull up here, Rise and Singe. The Rise, of course, taken away. The Singed, both these players are playing Darius into Singe because Darius one of the few that can actually punish Singe. So very interesting to see where the top lane landscape goes. We didn't think that would be the story after some tanks in the top lane, but the Darius are already rewriting some expectations. Certainly is. I, I wouldn't mind a ban uh, from that out of Griffin, especially as we do go into uh, Griffin on the red side. So might be looking at a Talia ban, maybe a Darius ban, or maybe they just let the Darius through and they say, okay, let's uh, prepare for that, make sure we don't get caught off guard by that this time around, because we've seen teams do that uh, before. Here's a risky thing to say. People are saying Marksman are dead. You know who beats Darius in the top lane? Marksman. <laughs> Lucian and Vayne top especially. Ooh. Dumpster Darius. So if we're going to see some Vayne top, which there are players in Korea, pro players playing in top lane, yep. maybe that's the time. Maybe you let it through and you show us something new here. Let's jump into pick and ban for game two. Now is the time to show something new. Griffin, can you uh, actually go up against one of the mi stronger mid-tier teams that we do have here in the LCK? Well, no Tarek he allowed in this particular game. Tarek first ban. We'll see how long that trend stays up. And you just know one team eventually will not ban it, and then we'll wonder if we see an insta-lock. So that's an interesting thing. Teams have to scrim this now because it's going to be banned so frequently. The Fiddlesticks is the first adaptation ban we do see was picked by Lahan's last game, now banned away. I don't have to translate that sign for you guys. Let's win our first game for Griffin, they say, and still looking for that first Three game. Three support bans now with Pike banned. Yep, down goes Pike. Haven't seen any Pike today. Uh, I think it did get banned in banned every game. Every game. Uh, it did not get banned actually in game two of the last series. That was true. That was with the Leona and Rakan matchup. That was just too good to pass up. Yeah. But it has been a common ban, like we're mentioning. The Camille which wasn't able to lead to a big enough snowball. A very common first pick in this meta will be banned away. Now Griffin's on the red side. So they do have the ability to counter pick something like a Darius. Darius, if it's blind pick, we already mentioned that Marksman can be taken into it like a Vein or a Lucian. The Darius, a little bit different. My big expectation is, given that the meta seems to be counter pick and snowball hard in the early game, that red side will be by far the preferential side. Unless you can get something like a Talia or a Camille and make it work. Seems like the counter picks available on red side are stronger. Khan as the final ban here. What does that mean for what's left open? Some teams would take Rise in this spot. A lot of different things yeah. to consider. The Lucian, for example, is a dominant pick for teams like King Zone as Prey been able to do big things on that. And you know what you could do with a pick like Darius? Something. Aurelia. Okay, Aurelia seems pretty obvious, but with a pick like Darius, even though it could get countered in the top lane, if it gets counterpicked on that side, you could always just throw it into the bot lane and say, hey, you pick for the counter pick in the top lane, but we're not going to throw it up there. Aurelia is a four-way flex. You don't see it in jungle, but every other role, including support, you see Aurelia, so it's about the most flexible possible. I might say mid lane support top 80 carry but i might even have top as the fourth strongest role for aurelia because she's so strong <laughs> yeah. in so, so many weird different roles that. very weird thing to say given this used to be purely top only speaking of used to be purely top only we do see the shen to pair it with a yasuo this is a very early yasuo but if chovy can play it in mid lane they can flex and that's a big cheer from the crowd for the yasuo yeah i mean they want to they want to try to bring it out here. And uh, seem like everybody on the side of Griffin is pretty happy about that one. Yasuo, of course, one of the most exciting picks we had. When it first was getting picked, everybody was so hyped, but now it's so normal. Well, especially because now it played everywhere, so you don't yeah. even have to have just I mean, one lane. One very strong lane counter to Yasuo is Vlad. Already we see it here. Now, basically, Han Hanwha Life will not expect to bot lane yeah. Yasuo. It, uh, Vladimir crushes Yasuo in lane, so yeah. that will make it very difficult. But Yasuo can go mid, Yasuo can go top, as we've outlined. So this is kind of the state of affairs where on blue side, you can cause no-go zones where it's like, you've got a sick flex pick. We know it's not going this one place, but we can't control the other lanes. Yeah. 
it's kind of a weird situation where I know that uh, team compositions matter and all that, but it's like, how about we just pick the most flexible and top tier champions possible and try to make them fit and win like that. It kind of feels like the draft is slightly edging in that direction. Trondle expected to be jungle, could be support. Probably going to be jungle Trondle on the side. On my life, Esports, the Nocturne was banned a couple of times in the first phase. Flex pick also. There it is. Probably going to be jungle, just because we have a Yasuo who's probably not going bot lane anymore. It's kind of a weird thing. You really have to <laughs> unpack. You really need yeah. to know a lot about matchups all over the map because really there's so much going on. It's not just a Vettia special. We will likely see a Nocturne mid at some point in this tournament. But Nocturne taken on the red side. And this Gragas fight, and again, it's largely support Gragas. We saw Ignar playing and getting some nice engages, even though they got run over by the E eventually. Yeah. But a lot of support Gragas in solo queue, and we do see a Gragas ban. Yeah, I mean, he's a fantastic engager, and uh, you can just build him tank out of the support role, and he works just fine that way. You're going to see Karthus banned here as the first ban for Hanma Life Esports. They're saying, well, you could, I guess, technically still get Nunu and Karthus in this lineup, so let's not deal <laughs> with any more cheese. Yeah. So that's Hanwha Life Esports and the Alistair. Surprising ban because Alistair Yasuo is kind of the god tier duo, but maybe because we've already mentioned Vladimir comes in. All right, well, we can't run Alistair Yasuo because he'll get crushed by Vlad. Let's just not let you have Alistair for a potential uh, bruiser bot lane on the yeah. blue side. Darius finally comes through in the band. By Hanwha Life there. Esports. By Hanwha Life. They're like, nope, we're not going to let you get that this time. Um, all right, now let's let's get some strong. roles locked in. Let's give us something that lets us kind of unpack what's going with thinking mid lane Yasuo jungle nocturne. But this is not actually going to narrow it down because both <laughs> Sword and Linderong have been spamming top lane rise. Yep. Does give them magic damage, and things like that are still relevant. I feel like physical damage only comps right now are probably at their highest power level in a long time with the introduction of the uh, Conqueror rune and also percentage armor penetration is, if this Braum's locked in, mid lane Braum is a possibility also, remember. It's probably gonna be mid lane Aurelia, but Armor um, Life Esports Ooh. themselves have played mid lane Braum jung jungle uh, graves in solo queue and instead it's gonna be the Gangplank, okay. Probably going to be top lane Gangplank. Seems like we know what's going on inside of Hanwha Life Esports yeah. so far. Kind of got to figure it out. Uh, Leona bot with uh, the Vladimir. I really uh, in the mid lane Gangplank top Trundle Jungle. Kind of strange to see the Leona unprompted with no Rakan on the red side. Will they pick it? Still got a bit of time here to switch it up. Old favorite of Key. They don't have ranged hard engage, so they just decide. Oh, they change it. Oh, they change it. All right, so they're just going to go with almost no engage, kind of just the ghosting in or a flank from Vladimir Aurelius. So no true primary engage with GP the GP from GP or Jana. something like that. Jana can also just be exploded by Nocturne. So <laughs> we'll see how the disengage yeah. goes on that one. Final pick here. If they want to get some power, they do go for some power in bot lane. Is it going to be, once again, the Rise? Because, of course, it was Rise Soraka. Uh, as a possibility, it was Rise bot lane in the last matchup. Going to wait yeah. and see what the final decision is. We know better than to decide things too early. The jungle Nocturne. It's Nocturne and Shen, so turning off the lights and bringing in Ninja is very, very possible here. <laughs> yeah. But can they make the Rise work? It was decent in game one, but a champion who really needs items and time to scale is the curious one as bot lane Aurelia, there mid is. lane Aurelia. Well, we talked about how little practice these AD carries get on a certain role. Song Yun almost definitely going to play the, 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 the Vladimir, and then of course the Rai is going to go over to Viper once again. I'm kind of, I'm worried for Hanwha Life Esports. How are they going to get into the back line onto Soraka and actually burst her down and kill her in time? And you consider, oh, well, they'll just flank Valdez. And if you're you know in a good spot, you can flank. If you choose the wrong time to flank and you're like, I'll get there, and suddenly the lights go out and the Shen yeah. shows up, that's a lot of disarray to pull off a successful flank. So who flanks who is going to be a fun thing to watch in this game. Yeah. Tons of burst damage coming out of the side of Griffin. You mentioned the Nocturne. We've all experienced that solo queue game where the Nocturne gets really fed and blows you up time and time and again when you're playing a Swissy champion. Tarzan going to be looking to play that role. When we get into game, let's talk about what the teams have and don't have. It's actually quite a lot to unpack because we don't have the shackles of the ranged yeah. AD to discuss. John of Vlad, a very mismatched lane. Some sick auto attacks, I guess, <laughs> with the AD. But probably just going to be the W max and trying to get lane presence. You know who has lane presence? A Soraka. Yep. 
That she does, and it sounds like the game is ready to go. So let's jump into game number two, Griffin up against Humble Life Esports. Kind of sounds like Griffin has their own specific cheer. It doesn't sound like they do one through two, three Griffin fighting. They have a couple of guys going back and forth, and then they just say Griffin fighting. Not sure if they're saying one, two, three, but now one thing has changed. It's a very <laughs> random thing to bring up. But okay. Their code in uh, promotions is Finn, which I thought was very surprising. It's the first time I'd seen a team not have their first letter of their name in their team, but they have moved to GRF, so I guess That's good. no longer allowed to have Finn, which I thought was cool, but also was a bit of a troll thing. Finn is weird, you know, it's like you're playing Finland or something. Team Finland coming from challengers in Korea doesn't really make too much sense. Really, and the rise and Janna versus, sorry, the, the Vlad and Janna versus Rise and Sorok is full of sense over there, Valdez. Yeah, I mean, we used to do this back in the day, right? Uh, season one. Before roles were really defined, we used to see all sorts of weird stuff like this. And before even macro, things like rotations and the meta was defined, there had to be a lot more explaining for the color cast. You used to have to talk about, say, double tier power spikes and all the things we were talking about in season three as well. Just pay a bit of lip service to the cool runes that we have here, Nimbus Cloak on Vladimir to get that extra ghost effect. And it is going to be, once again, going for attack speed keystone on the Nocturne. This ended up being the MLXG choice and pretty common is level two ganks even on Trundle are possible. They can at least force a flash. So look at the Soraka, she's so aggressive here. How are you gonna get out of this one? She's not. Waiting for the flash. The <laughs> they don't even need the pillar, but the pillar comes down anyway. First blood over to Sangyun who has that dark seal as well. Nicely done here. The stack does begin. Like you say, two stacks already on the Vladimir. Talking about what the teams have and don't have is where I wanted to get to, but we already have action, so we yeah. had to abort that plan. It's going to be a late invade, so probably going to be buff transfer on both sides, just the Scuttle Crab is going to be completed on the top side. One thing I want to mention, big discrepancy this game in terms of mid-jungle skirmish, which often does flow into something like the Scuttle Crab. You would take Irelia Trundle 10 out of 10 times against Vladimir and, sorry, uh, Nocturne and Yasuo in the early game. Very reliable to hit the first stun into the pillar into death. So that is one thing that Humble Life Esports in the draft have picked up. And again, we kind of have to point out every small advantage because everything is online so early in this snowball game. That's one lopsided area of this particular chancel. You got to be really careful. You have to identify the op opposing team's uh, winning points and try not to give them uh, too much from them. And uh, speaking of which, Tarzan looking to get on the map here up against that GP. And already the Tong comes down. And he's just trying to run away. He's going to be able to run the opposite way and flash, actually. So the gank is unsuccessful. He got the fat flash, and in the end, they couldn't really track there between Tarzan and Sword. And this is a uh, very early Drake's at three minutes into the game. This seems to be a set piece plan. They know there's no chance of the Nocturne being there. Nocturne already can't skirmish pre six anyway. They got lane control and mid lane. Happy times. This will be a Drake take. Early smite is just fine for the side of Humble Life Esports. Even backing early is the bottom lane of Vlad and Janna, because they did not even need to be there to help him finish that off. And uh, early Infernal Drake, fantastic for the side of Hanwha Life Esports. You look at Vlad, uh, the Irelia, the GP, they're all going to be popping off. And if we didn't see anything early game, and you asked the obvious question of, you know, where are the advantages, left versus right, blue versus red, in the early game, Gangplank, classic counterpick into Shen. If you don't get ganked, you just sit there. You can punish him when he CSs. It's a free lane for him, always been a farm lane. So you definitely say priority to Linderong on the top side. Aurelia over Yasuo, I'd take pretty comfortably in the mid lane. And then the only area you like is that I really believe that Ryze and Soraka can crush Vladimir Janna if it's just a 2v2. It never was because the level two gank threw off the lane. The Hens didn't use summoners, so he can actually push up and does get the lane presence yeah. now. But this is the only area where Griffin had drafted uh, a win because they're even losing in 2v2 around mid lane. So they have to push, they have to pressure bot lane and play around that. Yeah, and uh, the team knows that as well, and that might have been part of the reason why. I mean, level two ganks, very 
uh, common, but in this specific position, they were trying to get the bot lane for Hanwha Life Esports a little bit far ahead with that early gank, and uh, they get the kill. No summoners blown, as you mentioned, and uh, the pressure has continued from that Griffin bot lane. I'm so excited to see what Riot makes, the balance team makes of the meta we have at our hands. I think they look at this one, as we hold that point, as here's the mid lane gank, they stop the stun. Nicely done, gonna miss the tornado though on the backside, so nobody's gonna engage onto anybody. Being able to shot the stun there. There was no real ray for Trundle to close the gap, but again, coming back to the balance team, I think they look at a game like this and they say working is intended. They had patch notes where they said we wanted to get other people into the bot lane. This is, again, very, these sort of games, this game, the last game, I'd say three out of our four games so far, very emblematic of solo queue. There's not a big gap in the, in the play in terms of you know, very bloodthirsty comps, high kill games, blah, blah, blah. That part is probably fine. I think they look at the first game, and that's the game where they might say that uh, things are a little bit different. The reason why I say it might be surprising to some people, and it's not necessarily this kind of follow the jungler part of it. It's just that I feel like that comp, when we're running, uh, just in case you guys are tuning in later, uh, Nunu Karthus versus yeah. uh, Master Yi and Tarek mid, that sort of comp is actually the furthest away we'll see pro play from solo queue, and maybe this is the closest. And the reason why I say that is, there will never really be a solo queue Tarek Master Yi meta outside of high elo because four people are playing supports and one person is playing a carry. And of course, we all know solo queue, everyone wants to be the carry. <laughs> everyone wants to be the Master Yi, everyone yeah. wants to be the Karthus. You won't have four people with no communication opting into being a support. Whereas this sort of a game that is bloodthirsty, that does have a lot of counter picks and action, is close to solo queue, and that's healthier overall because you technically want to be able to play what you're seeing in the pro scene in your solo queue games as well. Tarzan gonna spot him, but does it matter? The GP ultimate comes in. He's able to find oh, he him. But nicely done by someone. Thankfully, the Stan United is there to help him out, but man. Very, very aggressive out of the side of Hanwha Life Esports. Should be able to pick up that red if he stays. Looks like he will not for now. And just to close things, pro games being things you can learn from and apply to solo queue is what you would want a healthy pro scene to be. The dump everything in, the four supports, you know, one hyper carry meta, that's not what that is. And that's where things go away is, we mentioned Soraka into Vlad. Those are the sort of trades where the Vladimir is just like, well, my life sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's Soraka and the Rise. You just lock them down with the Rune Prison. Then you're not going to be moving for quite a while. Looks like he didn't have his pool there as he used it a little bit earlier. So he just has to eat the damage. Kind of unfortunate, but that's the way this lane works. And you can see what's happening to Janna too in the, in the turret. They're pushing so hard. Oh, what? oh my god! He hits level six and says, hello, I'm Vladimir. Doesn't even use his ultimate. The electrocute proc just killed him straight up. Look at him, he doesn't even smirk. He's like, that's who I am. I am Sangyun, the destroyer. Saucer shoes, baby. That was no problem. <laughs> just put him into the graveyard. It needed to happen then. They would have lost the turret otherwise. And now, Viper can just you know, come back in. They probably will still take the first turret, which is what they picked the lane for. But another reality check for Lahans. Even the summoner heal was used. Yeah, I know. No worries. And this is, you know, what, say what you will about 80 carries and all that, but we're getting action early in the bot lane in a new way, right? This is like mid lane-esque, right? The outplays that you used to see, you know, 1v1 solo uh, laner versus solo laners do. And we just see it all of a sudden pop off from Sangyu. And why Vladimir? Why aren't we seeing these AD carries? Well, that sort of burst was pretty atypical for you guys. That kind of like old graves with burst like that. Yeah. That's one reason to run something like a Vladimir. Also, consider Linderan comes bot lane, tries to come in for a gank. Vladimir can go top lane, hang with most of those laners, still lane yeah. assignments. Feels like rotations are a new thing in that way because the rotations will come at different parts of the game than Look before. Here's the replay. Lens takes a turret shot, so he's at what? 550 health? Dies instantly. Didn't even need the ult, didn't need the GP ultimate, didn't need anything else, and Lahens was level 5 too, so no Soraka ultimate. They want this turret badly, but someone smartly is there for the counter game, trying to keep the turret up as long as possible. Even just the first brick, a first turret blood would be a welcome thing for Griffin, given all their struggles. And a play like that is not just your normal, like, oh, he, you know, he got beaten the lane. That's like an, a, a bit of an embarrassing play for Lehens, right? It's it's hard to really predict that, and it's so awesome to see Sangyun, a guy that uh, recently is becoming the carry for Hamalife Esports, 
jump onto Vlad and do something like that, that's awesome. That's really, really cool to see Song Yun have that ability. Yeah, LS has talked a lot about how Korean players have always had to offer more than other regions. It's a very high yeah. bank of great players in Challenger, so you can't get your role because you could have 480 carries from the LCK on the same team. And, uh, well, seems like Song Yun's both been practicing and doing some off rolling. He's feeling pretty good about the Vlad. That he is. Toby moves forward. There's the ultimate, but here's Nocturne. Toby gets low, but there's the knockup. And Toby will be able to pick up the kill. In the end, will just be a one for one. The jugglers just going to back off and begin farming the mid lane. After Everything's that. so flashy in this matter <laughs> because no, awesome. one, no one's ranged auto attack, and everyone's I getting know. in there and committing. <laughs> No more farming up, no more poking. No it's more about Tarzan. Engaged, and no more Tarzan. Well, uh -oh. Stan United, and here's Lehens. We spoke a little bit too early. Sungwon now trying to dodge him out and trade against Tarzan. Not going to be enough, though. 1v3, key let him die. And that's all you got to do. Nice rotation there as a response from Griffin. They're sending more friends. Two globals, a heal, and a shield. Enough to turn that one around. Sorry, Tarzan. We read your epilogue just too late. No need to give you that particular call. Able to live through it. Series not over yet for Hanwha Life Esports. I'm sure they want to pack up and go home early, but I would love a game three to see how things go when they go down the line. Yeah, I mean, we sit here and we, we look at that 2-0 and Vladimir with tons of magic pen and the, uh, you know, the extra kills, but Griffin currently is ahead in gold, as it does stand. Shield comes in, about 400 health. Lehan's able to walk up as well. There's no ability to turn on Tarzan, lives through all of this. That's what happens when you have abilities like Stan United and the Wish. Lava can still hold lane. Again, like you say, the Vladimir is going to have very early. Magic penetrates. It's already double magic pen. We'll turn that into the healing reduction very soon. That Grievous Wounds to help against the Soraka in particular. Song Yoon just holds the lane, but crucially for Griffin, they did not get rolled over in the mid lane. They took the bot lane turret. Let's see how their map play is, because still, closing out with a lead is something we can inspect and something that does echo previous metas when it comes to actually turning an early game lead into more. Yeah. And I was looking at the gold, and I was wondering, how is I'm a life not ahead? But uh, you take a look at the CS numbers, and I guess that tells the story. The jungle, and especially the bot lane for Griffin, showing up in a big way there. Even against that uh, Klepto GP in the top lane. Pretty impressive how they're able to, to stay ahead in that factor. Expect to see plenty of Rift Herald contests already. Sung the praises of the new Rift Herald a few times in this cast. Bot side, though, first Infernal. Hanwha Live took very early, three and a half minutes into the game. It was first started. Tarzan able to answer that one, so no lead when it comes to Infernals this game. Duo lane is mid. And yes, the duo lane is rising. Soraka, if you're joining us <laughs> late. Welcome to the LCK 2018 Summer Split. You'll be seeing a lot more like this. Definitely the whose line is the anyway thing going on quite yeah. a lot here because I guess that's an even better analogy for Korea because they call lane line. Yeah. The top line, <laughs> yeah, bottom line, really mid do. line. So whose line is it anyway? Yeah. Nobody really knows. We're all still trying to figure it out. We now never really know until 10 picks are locked in. It's, all right, the Rift Herald contest is going to start. Yep. Trying to figure out whose Rift Herald it is and Sword. Threatening from the top side, trying to burst it down, and the smite is going to go over. Tarzan a little bit late. Lands getting low. Even plague huge. Even plague is huge, and down goes someone. But they're going to pull it back here as two members, three, going to go down from the side of Griffin. Sword able to get out here, but not for long. Looks like they're going to try to go for Viper instead, who may just survive. But that will be the Rift Herald and three kills to Hanwha Light. Song Yoon got in the back line. We already said double magic pens. That Hemoplague's not going to be doing small damage. They're going to put down the Rift Herald. They're going to get two turrets. They're going to get at least two turrets here because, again, this Rift Herald's so good. Not too much damage on this mid turret, but still. It was nothing. It was full health, and now yeah. it's dead. I mean, you, you get three kills. It looks like they're not going to push in for too much more. They'd Doesn't rather matter. just go back. You know, they got so much gold off of that fight and get a little bit of damage and uh, go back and buy. Yeah, no two turrets, but a very nice burst into the secondary turret. Linderon decided he wanted to go to top lane and pick up farm, so you can understand the respect. They can do more here. The ultimate's just too late from Nocturne, who wasn't in range to start. If they were going to commit for this, he needed to go in much earlier. It was just smited down at 200 health, and from there, watch for the Hemoplague. That's the big thing, gets it on multiple members. 
Vladimir Aurelia always going to be a cleanup crew. I was watching Linderong from the beginning of the fight to the end. He was just looking at Soraka and going full speed ahead. He got a barrel onto her, shot her in the face, pushed, you know, through the Hemoplague extra percentage damage as well. She just popped like a balloon, even after all of that healing. So we talked about getting to Soraka. Well, if you're trapped in the Baron pit, that's one way to do it. Very difficult to position from behind as a Soraka, even with Nocturne and Shen to kind of throw into disarray. We saw the value of this comp snowballing. Snowballing, definitely not happening. That's why I called out for the Vladimir. He got in there, he had the magic pen before, the magic resist could come through. Big fight for Sang Yoon. He's, uh, you know, he's not quite the little Cogmore that could anymore. Now he's empowered oh, yeah. away from those marksmen. Still making it work. We always talked about he was, how he was such a fantastic, talented player. His mechanics were awesome, but uh, they never really were unpacked unless, until we saw him on the uh, the Vladimir here tonight. I mean, he used to do really incredible stuff on Kog'Maw, but we never really saw him truly pop off in a way that he is tonight. I think it's because Rock Tigers at the time were pretty feast or famine. If they didn't get the, uh, the early game going, if someone didn't get the ganks, it's kind of lost. They never got to the point yeah. where the Cogmore was relevant in deciding games. A couple of throws against KT, I remember, that are maybe oh, yeah. a point away from that. But apart from that, they were able to... They largely needed the rest of the map doing well. Now he can actually be self-sufficient in some ways on a pick like the Vladimir. Playing the side lane, something we can once again talk about. We thought it was going to be for Griffin when they got the first break. It's actually going to be for Hanwell IP Esports. They got the Gangplank ult to delay the top turret take, and they're still pushing in bot. Well, we talked about how snowbally this can be. You, you can see how confident Hanwha Life Esports is. They rotate from the mid lane. They got the push going in the bottom side. And what is Sword going to do all by himself? There are two people in the top line desperately trying to take down an outer turret here that got saved one time by the GP ultimate. Hanwha Life, they're running away with this one. You do wonder if the Nocturne bans we saw in the first series were actually aimed at jungle. Because to me, Nocturne farms. He's not very relevant pre-6. The game seems to be decided by the first two ganks in a lot of cases. And Tarzan, for all the praise we've sung from him, has been a passenger for both games. Mid lane turret, the Rift Herald did a number on earlier, will go down. The gold lead is not game deciding yet, but we're cresting on it, Valdez. We really are. We talked about, um, you know, who's got the lead at 15, 20, 25 minutes. These are all going to be very important stats that I guarantee you Riot is also looking at, not just for competitive, but also for solo queue to say, does this meta make sense? Because if it's 100%, the team that's ahead at, you know, 15, 20 minutes that wins, is that really healthy for the game? I'm not sure. It's a lot of fun. I wouldn't like to change up this style of, you know, super aggression and guys like Song Yoon popping off on Vladimir, but... Uh, We'll just have to wait and see what happens as the stats come in. I hope they take a light hand before they take a heavy hand. I think you can do a hatchet job, Agreed. but Agreed. even something small, like taking over point 0.1, take off the buff in the ratio for AP damage to turrets would at least hurt the Vladimir a little bit when it comes to closing out games. Okay, and that zoom out here and seeing where a lot of the damage has happened. We saw the team fights around the Rift Herald, where the really big decider in this game really snowball on the side of Hanwha Life. Yeah. You talked a lot about how uh, old Rocks Tigers, they really loved to, uh, you know, it was Feast or Famine. Did someone get the ganks or not? And that would really you push their success. New old Rocks Tigers. Yeah, yeah, new old Rocks Tigers. Not old Rocks of, Tigers. Of the old, you know. Um, but in this game, he went bot, he got that first gank, and that was great. He got the Vladimir ahead, and Song Yun is really popping off. But after that, he went mid and died in a really awkward way after getting a bunch of globals, and then he died really early in the last fight. So he's not... He hasn't really been a big factor in this game outside of that first gank, and I don't know, I guess he's doing his job once again. He got the early gank, and that was it. Trundle not necessarily something we expected to be so high a priority, but like you're saying, it's all working. For the side of Humwell IFB Sports, will it just be a 2-0, 2-0 day? A very quick close. It'll be done before 10 p.m. local time. 9.22 for those following at home in Korea right now. Griffin not done. Again, only a 3,000 gold lead. Rise has some new items together. This is becoming a new build here with the Rod of Ages being cut for something like a Shirelius. Yeah. If the game's being decided pre-25 minutes, maybe you don't build a Rod of Ages. Maybe you just go for more utility in the Shirelius. We're seeing Shirelius added to a lot of Rise builds, but not at the cost of a Rod of Ages in previous patches. Yeah. Scaling builds and the like have uh, generally been 
pushed away. Although you do see this time the Proto Belt do, does come out on the Vladimir. So he was able to get that very fast. Decided to go into that, I believe, after the Morella Namacon, though. So he was very yeah. fed early. So with that extra gold, he already had the Sork Boots. He wanted to go into extra Magic Pen first, which is a, a pretty common thing to do when you get ahead on and then didn't And then completed it because, hey, Sorak is a pretty good person to trivialize with exactly. Grievous Wounds. So yeah. I think it all flowed while Oblivion Orb with Sorcerer's Shoes is the old haunting guy, Sorcerer's Shoes. So it's a very good feel when it comes to getting power. And you can't argue with the results when we remember that kill onto the Soraka that certainly has made Lahens a bit of a non-factor in this game. Yeah. But what now? We look at where the minimap is at. For now, the warding is pretty shallow from the side of Hanwha Life Esports. They don't control the red side or blue side jungle of Gryphon. Now, you could argue that if they just go in with their faces, they win skirmishes, but they don't have enough information to know where everyone is at. So that does stall any sort of onslaught. Trying to get in onto Chovy, but <laughs> the Irelia ultimate actually gets blocked by a wind wall. Kind of awkward there for Lava, but good play by Chovy to survive and not get ganked by four people. Gotta say, Chovy's been more at the thick of it than rather in game number one. Well, yeah. I thought he might be collapsed upon again by staying a little bit too extra, but uh, does back away. So we're gonna have to respect Shen and Nocturne. You need very deep wards to make either of those predictable. Obviously the wards and the Shen not necessary because Shen's gonna be sitting in the lane, but the wards onto the Nocturne are always good to have. He is top quadrant, as we can see on the minimap. And Hummel Life Esports, you look at their lineup and to some degree, they're pretty happy to just play a long game. You think Vlad, Aurelia, GP, and that sounds pretty good when it comes to late game yeah. team fights. Yeah, that's a, it's all right, Papa. But uh, <laughs> that's something that's kind of afforded them. When you win the early game, when you have good scaling, they don't feel strong enough to walk in and force things. So for now, them trading farm with the enemy team and other comps, it would be actually consequential because Griffin theoretically should be losing out on trades because there should be areas they can't visit to pick up farm. For now, at least, Hammer Life Esports playing with their food a little bit. Yeah. Being extra careful. They have the double Infernal to just the single Infernal of Griffin. Not the massive gold lead you might expect at uh, 22 minutes on 8.11 patch, but uh, still working with that aggression. Going to push in the top outer turret, actually. And we're taking a look at the total damage dealt. And in fact, it will go over to Linderong on the GP once again. GP versus Shen is, again, a free lane. You're getting Kleptoprox, you're farming, you can get Barrel Harass, very easy to pick up. Kind of meaningless damage. Damage onto the inner turret, much less meaningless. It's, oh. oh, hello. That's definitely not meaningless. Forces the flash out of Lahens early. And uh, that's fantastic for the next fight. The Soraka will be easy pickings for the rest of this Hanma Life team. Basically, everyone bar Janna can kind of assassinate her on the side Pretty much. of Hanwha. So that's awkward times for Soraka to be right in the back line. Instead, she walks up for a star call, hoping this turret won't go down. But spoilers, it will. Another barrel eaten by the Soraka. Very unfortunate there. Looking to eat another oh! one. And OK, here comes Doctor, And they're finally going to try to go in the knockup. But do they have enough damage? The healing out of the hands. They are able to actually win this fight. And now Hanwha Life Esports is on the run. Very low members right now of Hanwha Life and Griffin with the flash, able to pick off Linderong for now. Does go to the stopwatch. This might just be an ace. Down they do all go. And Hanwha Life Esports bite off way more than they can chew as they all go down. Sick wombo combo coming through from Griffin. They were known as a late game team fighting team in Challenger. They would fall behind in the early game from time to time, even against lesser opposition. They make the Miracle team fight happen. They're going to find gold parity and a Baron buff from that play. Well, this is certainly unexpected. Griffin pulling one out of the party hat here, saying, hey, we have something left for you guys. And that will mean the Baron on top of all the kills that they did get. And all of a sudden, this team gets a lot stronger. That Rise has more time to scale. The Yasuo and the Nocturne going to be able to burst down members a lot quicker. And Hanwha Life, they have to be really careful. Now let's watch the replay. The Nocturne, oh, kind of to save Lahan. Seems to be the start, but it's Nocturne with Shen Ultimate goes in. Watch Chovy in the back line. Oh, Three point. man last breath. They can't click on Lahan's. He lives, it's doing healing. They can't deal with the Yasuo. For once, they actually have their hands in the cookie jar far too deep. Flash is still up. And they pop the Shirelias and clean up HLA.
He talked about how Tovey looked a lot more comfortable than Rather, and uh, he proves it there. When the pressure's on, when they're about to potentially lose in a final game-ending push, he comes in, knocks up two members, ults them both, and he cleans up a large portion of that fight, so props to him. And that items that were pipe dreams before are suddenly coming closer. Look at that double BF sword towards Infinity Edge. It would have been delayed for a while. It was actually going to go for a tankier build. You can see the drums fist in the inventory. And now can work his way towards an Infinity Edge. Big power spike, 120% crit. And he capped out with the IE looking at the last fight. A lot of passengers, they sat in damage from GP. But because the fight wasn't fought on Vladimir's terms, it's fought on the terms of Griffin with the last breath. Vladimir doing less damage than his opposing numbers have been three members of the enemy team. Honestly, Soraka actually yeah. doing similar damage to Vlad. Team effort from Griffin. And Trundle with the 84 damage. The memes still are not dreams. Uh, well done from the Trundle. They're going to engage now. Good people play onto that front line. But Vladimir disappears. They don't have enough damage to knock them out. And everybody from Griffin survives. Key getting extremely low in the back line and Lava all alone. Can he do it alone though? Picks off one. Irelia. Trying to get onto lands, but it's not going to be enough. He gets silenced up. And another one team fight here for Griffin, winning that one two to one. They try to engage against Baron. The gold lead was only 3,000 at the start of the fight. It is still gold lead Hanwha Life. The two fights in a row, they've played to the hand of Griffin. Viper has suddenly got items as well, and Morel and Omicron is complete. The target selection has not been good enough. Let's watch the replay. Watching how this one goes, I think Sung Yoon is the one that decides that it's time to fight. Watch Sung Yoon dives into the back line. I believe he's silenced. He actually just dies, never uses pool in the fight. This actually raises an important point, but we'll talk about it after the fight closes out. But the moment that Vladimir, the person who honestly was the hard carry of this game so far was down. Oh, it looks a bit sad with Aurelia going alone. She had no exit plan. Something I was thinking about when I was preparing for this patch is we're going to see Yasuo uh, Marksman at some point. Yasuo bot lane. We're seeing the Vladimir bot lane. Remember that the play style that is needed for someone like a Yasuo bot lane is split push. And for a Vladimir bot lane, it can be split push. It's also primary engage in some cases. These are not things that need to be done up close and personal by AD carries until now. Feels like the last time we had split push AD carries was Purple Build Vayne going Yomu's yeah. Ghost Blade, <laughs> Old Blade the Ruin King in Season 2. Suddenly, your role as an AD carry is not stay safe and do the most damage. It's often engage or split push. It's new things that these players have under 100 games experience on. So while we were singing the praises of Sung Yoon in lane on the Vladimir, it's out of lane. It's, hey, could you just prime me initiate on Vladimir <laughs> against a comp yeah. that you may never have played against at a professional level? Suddenly, it gets tricky. It really does, and uh, okay, this time it's Griffin engaged and trying to get off to Key, and he disappears. It's enough damage to take him out, and the big knockup from Toby is going to do it. Soraka keeps everybody alive, and Griffin, they are running away with this one now. Linderon, too, going to get caught up. A double kill to Viper. Nobody can ever kill this Rise that is now completely online. And these late-game team fights from Griffin are how they made their name, and they look like they will not go down without a fight. I invite a game three. Just oh, understand yeah. where things will go. Will we see a first round Darius from um, what to try to combat this? Will we have to see a rise ban against bot lane rise to make it work? The eulogies have been thick and fast, but we're still learning as casters about when games yeah. are truly dead. And this will be the first comeback game we've seen on patch 811. They're certainly proving what the rise can do too. And this is the first time again that Griffin actually engaged. He gets on the key, and that's Nocturne also that's online. And now Jana can't reset a fight. Nothing she can do. Three man Sung silence too. Sung Yun's doing an AD carry impression, but doesn't do any damage because he's not committing. The fights are starting when Tarzan Dam pleases, not when the Vladimir pleases like it was earlier. And that is the difference here, as they've got no value out of a free farmed fed Vladimir. And now Vladimir, because they got all the early advantages, Viper just quietly has picked up a 60 CS advantage, picking up farm when they were behind. Yeah. They are no longer behind. He's in a fantastic spot now. I mean, this rise is... Uh, <laughs> the, the GP still does the most damage, but it just all gets healed up by the uh, Soraka. And, and Sung Wan outdoes himself. Yeah, I know. With he, the sick 41. <laughs> How do you even do that? That's like less than an auto attack. And that's probably one auto against someone with armor, against Shen. Against Shen, yeah. yeah. 
He nice. maybe chomped Shen. He's like, less AD for you, mate. Alt Shen, chomp Shen. He's like, yeah, I did my job. No, the alt would have done more damage. <laughs> yeah, I guess he never had the time to, <laughs> to lay that one down. Um, too much for the Trundle. He's, uh, you know, too much on his plate. It's hard to beat, honestly. Let's see if he can manage it. We believe in it's you. It's possible. There's always zero. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we really are learning as we go along. I'm glad you did mention that because that last fight, you, you could not kill the Soraka. And this fight, the Janna died instantly. And yeah, it, it, five before. Three fights later, it's like all of a sudden rises the massive powerhouse. He was ahead of Vlad in CS for a while, but he just needed that little bit of extra time, the one or two team fights, and then all of a sudden it's like unbelievable. But would a better team have closed the game? We said for Hummel Live Esports, yeah, they're playing pretty good about a longer game. They were in a lead, they have good scaling. They play with their food a little bit, and it probably would have been fine in other games. But Griffin, the pin dropped one time, two time, and now maybe the game is out of their grasp. It feels like getting value out of Yasuo through the Nocturne Ultimate has been far easier than getting value out of Sungyun on the Vladimir in this unfamiliar position of trying to close a game with a dive or an initiation on Vlad. Let's see if Sungyun can pick it up. Again, you're only as good as your last Hemo play, your last play. It's pro play. Unfortunately, people have very short memories and attention spans. But their guaranteed engage is there with Shen and Nocturne, and two out of two times look pretty good. Yeah. There still is a chance, right, if Lahens has some bad positioning and they can blow up the Soraka. Certainly, Hanma Life still have a crap load of damage on the backside. I mean, you got the Hemo Plague and GP barrels are going to begin hitting you in the face for thousands of damage. You got the Irelia jumping into your back line, disarming people. It's it's going to be a good fight, but uh, again, it needs to be fought on their terms. See what happens here. The vision line has never been able to be pushed up by Hanwha Life East. What's been the big problem since around 19 minutes, getting Baron Vision pushing here to get leads. But speaking of vision lines, <laughs> smart play from Viper. Yeah, he knows. Side laning and not being caught. I guess Rise is probably a lot more analogous to an AD carry than the Vladimir is. Yeah. Sits there, tries to farm up in the lanes and not die. He's got a, a lot of items as well with the Death Cap complete. Oh boy. Death Cap and Infinity Edge. I mean, Infinity Edge is now basically AD Death Cap. So they've got some very nice spikes going on on the side of Griffin. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at the damage charts and the Gangplank was out doing everybody for the last, you know, two, three fights, but. Eventually, the Rise, the Asu, and the Nocturne, they can just burst someone so fast that does that overall sustained damage really matter? What has been kind of crucial to me thinking back is consider the game if at the Janna pick, which remember was last round, it was the Leona. They would have had engage. The owner could ult the hands on site at every moment, and you get a flash or you kill the Soraka. Consider the Janna, who's done nothing this game, has been cut down many, many times. Without that engage, we already said in champs that they need to flank. Can't flank when you're trying to attack people in the base. And now with that lack of initiation and Song Wan being unconvincing on trying to make those early picks, Hanwha Life Esports have stalled. I wonder if they'll think back to that as a coaching staff and say, maybe we needed to risk the Leona as a blind pick just to find a way to actually force engages. Yeah, I mean, the Leona might have had a, a slightly harder time than the Janna in the lane against Agreed. the Soraka, but... Uh, Remember, they lost lane anyway. They still lost anyway, exactly. So, would it have really mattered? I mean, Key is a, a great Leona player. Certainly would have been a different game from there, but uh, the past is the past, and we live in this game for now. He's always looked exposed on Enchanta supports, these Peel supports as well. He's very much at home on barred or engaged support, so... Donna Soraka met a little bit less kind to him. Okay, trying to uh, feel out this Baron area, you'll notice. Okay, there's the flash, they want Tarzan. Really want him. Uh, that's not gonna work. Nocturne pretty fast as well, and the TP even comes out from Linderong. Does get canceled, but a failed engage from Hanwha Life, that's not what they were looking for. Tarzan actually used his spell shield on the Hema Plague after it was already cast. That doesn't work, Tarzan. I caught that yeah. one. Oh boy, and now Trundle gonna get caught here. They're gonna just dive onto that back line again, and Tarzan is gonna go down, though. Viper's the back line. Okay, Jana does, uh, though, as well. Viper getting in there, and down will go the Trundle. 
And Lava trying to do that damage. Here's Linderong, though. Can he get a couple of crit barrels? They're going to take out Viper, finally. A very, very close fight. Sonya just barely surviving, but it looks like Toby is going to be able to clean up and finally coming back. Was the rest of them, and down does go Lava after that GA. A triple kill for Chovy, showing up big in his first game. Welcome to the LCK. Chovy comes in for Rather after his performance on the Lulu in game number one, and beasts this game on the Yasuo. I thought he might never get the introduction, but there is the face of the man who turned this game, and Griffin might just win it on this push. They're going to certainly get an inhibitor. They can back off to Baron. Death timers without a minion wave. All right, game will not end just yet. Getting yeah. too hyphy with some of these fights. 35 minutes, a lot longer than the recent games we've seen. But now Griffin, head and shoulders ahead of Hanwha Life Esports. Yeah. Ki and Sungwon, the only ones left alive here as they died first. Not really doing much, actually, in these team fights. I mean, I, I guess Sungwon and Ki survived a little bit longer, which is why it looked okay. But uh, again, just dying and going down and... Baron should be Griffins here. It's Nobody's even going to challenge They him. are spotted, but yeah, it's not going to be challenged. They don't have the respawns. No way to get the Linderung's teleport. Would have been useless and isn't up anyway. Will be Baron to the side of Griffin. Big cheers from the Griffin crowd who have more fans actually than Hanwha Life. If we look into our stadium, there's yeah. a lot of fans here for Griffin. They certainly wouldn't have been impressed with game number one. And it started so slow. And should we be surprised? Nocturne pre-6, pretty useless. Rise, stacking up. Not much is happening. The ultimate use, and every time he just tries to get Janna out of the fight, dies for it. But that was first a great engage with Sword with the Taunt Flash. And then, honestly, Viper, if you're going to dive the backline, plays this immaculately. Does die through it, but actually goes with a pincer play on Rise. And to me, out of lane team fight. Viper's been a lot stronger than Sangyun at making these mages work in a team fight. And Chobi just cleans up. He's been able to be really the marksman clean. style and just go for the closest target. Yasuo damage needs no introduction. Chobi is so clean, man. Even in his first LCK game, he doesn't seem to care. Sword, though, he's going to be caught here. Let's see if they can burst him down. The Soraka heals and the taunt away. Can they even kill him? The Soraka ultimate, the wish comes in, but finally they kill the Shen. And has he Soraka? And the uh, hands is running. Meanwhile, look, look at base. okay, that's just going to be the end. Nobody can go back in time. Down it does go. Game number two goes over to Griff and last ditch effort from Hama Life. But ladies and gentlemen, we got a series. Man, oh man, what an ending to the game. Seema, they really wanted to get a kill, but sadly lost the game for Hama Life Esports. That was a bit of a silly one, and Griffin will not go down. Their winning streak does not end in game number two. 16 best of three wins in a row in 2018. Look dangerously close to ending that first 15 minutes. It was Hanwha Life Esports hook, line, and sinker. But the sinking feeling started when they couldn't kill the Soraka in top lane. One fight, two fight, three fights all went the way of Griffin, and suddenly we got ourselves a series. Now we do. I mean, this man that you see on your screen, get well acquainted. Toby looks good on the Yasuo. And you talked about potential bans for the next series. Now that Hanwha Life Esports could not close it out, they may want to think about banning out that Yasuo. He looks super clean on that. Oh, boy. Good times, good times in Korean League of Legends. Oh, yeah. We still understand this meta, but if this is how it's going to be, happy <laughs> times abound, unless you're a marksman player. Watching the replay here, and look at this. Well, Rise Ultimate, you skip through. They bring the minions, remember. Those minions are Baron buff. They're not dying in one hit. No backdoor bonus. That was something that was not calculated by Hanwha Life. No, it wasn't. The GP ult came in. Canberra is trying to save the game, but it could not. And uh, looks like we have a player that's having a little bit of trouble. That's a Griffin support. Lehens, actually. Uh, really emotional after game number two and the coach actually looking bewildered i mean they did win the game but lahens having a really rough game i suppose in his own mind a little bit hard on himself here yeah, soraka certainly did struggle in this game hopefully we'll get some extra context after the game always tough to see and it's mid-series can't afford to have any slip-ups there need him to yeah. be in full power in the next game I think we're going to be going to a break very shortly, but man, I just want to get started again. I just want to go into game three, but guys, we will be back in about 10 minutes for game three, Griffin versus Hanwha Life Esports.